So the iconic Namor the Submariner has finally joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which is surprising considering he's one of Marvel's oldest characters dating all the way back to 1939. And in an interesting twist, his kingdom of Atlantis has even been reimagined as an ancient Mayan civilization hidden from the rest of the world, much like Wakanda except underwater. His name has even been changed from meaning the Avenging Sun, even though it's really just Roman spelled backwards, to El Nino Sin Amor, meaning the boy without love. Despite these changes, Namor still manages to stay true to his roots in the comics in almost every other way, but since he hasn't been as popular the past few decades as DC's Aquaman, here's everything you need to know about Marvel's ruler of the seven seas and his history with Wakanda, the X-Men, and the Avengers and how it could affect the MCU going forward. As a son of a human and an Atlantean, Namor's origins sound almost identical to Aquaman's, mostly due to the fact that Aquaman was created two years after Namor as a direct ripoff of Submariner. But in the Marvel Universe, in a string of events that somewhat inspired his MCU debut, Namor's human father, Leonard McKenzie, was searching for vibranium in the ocean when he met Namor's mother, Finn, a princess of Atlantis who was sent to stop him. Instead, they fall in love and Finn becomes pregnant with Namor, but her father, Emperor Thakor, isn't having it and sends his Atlantean army to attack McKenzie's crew and bring his daughter home. So Namor was born in Atlantis, a human Atlantean hybrid capable of living in and out of water, with bonus mutant powers such as his iconic winged feet. He grows up alongside his cousins Dorma, Namora, and Byra, and his shady friend Murano, destined to eventually inherit here at the throne of Atlantis. He first meets Atuma, the prince of the nomadic Sharka tribe, when they team up with a swift tide to recover an ancient artifact, but it ends in disaster when Atuma's father and a number of his people are killed, and Atuma blames Atlantis, declaring them enemies. After this, Namor teams up with Captain America and the original Human Torch to fight Nazis in World War II as the invaders, where he finds his old buddy Murano helping the Nazis under the codename U-Man. He returns home from the war to find that his cousin Byra has convinced the Corps to banish him from Atlantis, which eventually becomes a normal thing as Namor gets exiled or separated from Atlantis a good bit. When he finally comes back home, Atlantis is destroyed by members of his human father's original crew, killing both Namor's mother and Emperor Thakor. While he should have then assumed control of Atlantis, he instead gets amnesia where he's found by Charles Xavier, who gets Namor to help him find other mutants. When Xavier stops Namor from hurting people he witnessed murder a mutant, Namor decides to leave. He goes back to Atlantis to find his home destroyed, so he declares war on the surface world. The Fantastic Four come to stop him, and Namor gets distracted by Susan Storm, the invisible woman, who he becomes becomes obsessed with for a good while. After this, he attacks the Avengers with the Hulk, and they later ask him to join them, but he declines the offer. He almost joins Magneto's evil brotherhood of mutants, but decides that it's not for him either when he doesn't like the way Magneto treats Scarlet Witch, who he also has a crush on. To further his woman problems, his first wife is killed by the Princess of Lemuria, the Atlantis of the Pacific Ocean, and when his second wife turns evil, he has to kill her himself. He eventually joins the Avengers and forms the first Defenders team with Doctor Strange and Hulk, with the help of the hero Stingray, Namor reunites with his human father right before he's killed by the villain Tiger Shark. He then forms the original Illuminati with Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Mr. Fantastic, Professor X, and Black Bolt, only to leave when he disagrees with them, exiling a Hulk into space. He then strikes an alliance with Doctor Doom and forms a dark Illuminati called the Cabal with Norman Osborn, Emma Frost, Loki, and the Hood. When Osborn asks Namor to execute rogue Atlanteans, Namor refuses and leaves the team, but not before starting a fling with Emma Frost. Siding with the mutants at the the time, Namor acquires a portion of the Phoenix Force along with Emma Frost, Cyclops, Colossus, and Magik. As the Avengers stood in their way of creating a utopia, Namor takes it upon himself to finish them off himself. He starts by flooding Wakanda to get to T'Challa, and in the process destroys the entire kingdom and sparks a heated rivalry between Wakanda and Atlantis that we would see adapted into Wakanda forever. As they are on the brink of an all-out war, T'Challa and Namor agree to peace when universes start colliding and the Illuminati is reformed to stop it. But Shuri, the Queen of Atlantis, sends her army to attack Atlantis anyway. In retaliation, Namor directs Thanos to invade Wakanda, the latter in which we would see play out an in Infinity War. The Illuminati creates a bomb to destroy other universes to save their own, but when none of them are capable of detonating it, Namor steps in to do it himself. He then tells T'Challa that he told Thanos to invade Wakanda and leaves the team. He reforms the Cabal with Thanos, and they take it upon themselves to invade and destroy other universes to save their own. When the final two universes collide, Namor escapes with the Cabal to Doctor Doom's restructured battle world. Here he eventually makes amends and teams up with Black Panther, who also survived in an attempt to stop Doom. After this, he reforms the Invaders, and then the Defenders, and of course rejoins the Avengers once again around the time of Brainwash She-Hulk attacks Atlantis, so there's no telling how any of this could come into play in Avengers Secret Wars or any other future MCU projects. But with all the characters active now, an Invaders or Defenders team is possible. In the comics, Namor's been shown to be able to control water, kind of like Moana, and is about as strong as the Hulk. So if they stick to this, Namor could be a key figure in the MCU going forward. 
Sword. If you want to check out some Namor comics, Marvel's currently releasing a series called Namor and Conquered Shores, an old man Logan style story set in the dystopian future. If you want to go further back, be sure to check out the 72 issue Submariner series from 1968 and also the 12 issue Saga of the Submariner Remaining series from 1988.